It's a week before the end of the holy month of Ramadan, and Aceh's busiest market is buzzing with activity. Everyone's looking for a deal, a special gift to mark the coming festivities. The market was completely destroyed by the December 26 tsunami. Hundreds of its merchants were killed, and the survivors were left without any means of support. The International Organization for Migration has since rebuilt this and other markets, reinvigorating the local economy and putting money back into the pockets of traders like Adi Mitari. In the months since a 15-metre wall of water slammed into Indonesia's northernmost province, IOM has vastly expanded the scope and scale of its operations across Aceh, constructing new homes along 600 kilometres of coastline, liaising with communities along the tsunami belt, reinvigorating the medical system in remote and underserviced areas, delivering aid to the needy, and breathing new life into a devastated economy. Aceh is a special place in terms of the people themselves. They want to be in charge of their own lives. They want to take themselves forward, their society forward. We're here as an aid for them in that respect. The production line in this Bandarache factory never sleeps. Here, sand and water combine to form the building blocks of Aceh's reconstruction. The basic 36 square meter housing units can be reconfigured to suit different needs, rapidly disassembled, moved to a new location, or even converted into permanent structures. Using an Indonesian design and a 5,000 strong Achenese workforce, these cement components will be bolted together like a giant jigsaw puzzle to create earthquake-resistant homes, schools and clinics around the province. The Indonesian government has asked IOM to build 11,000 temporary homes for a vulnerable and traumatised population. One of 16 Achenese contractors employed by IOM, Jerji Naskaputra, is optimistic. And the qualities that meet the standard of IOM First time is very difficult, but now, absolutely, I'm happy to work with IOM and I'm ready to contribute to rebuild Aceh. Day to day we learn, we learn, and the process going on, and then we find out that it's going to be very simple and the people are really going to like it. In Bandar Aceh's Panayung port, laborers load the cement components aboard the 60-ton Harapan Kita, literally our hope. Every day, vessels like this former fishing boat travel the west coast of Aceh, delivering building materials to tsunami-ravaged communities along the way. Our hope is bound for Chalang, a city wiped off the map by the tsunami. IOM is building dozens of temporary elementary schools there, part of its commitment to build 200 on behalf of UNICEF by the end of 2005. In Chot Paya, 20 minutes northeast of Bandar Aceh, a new community is emerging from the rubble. Two thirds of the local population died in the tsunami, but with IOM's help, 76 families have already moved from tattered tents into new shelters, and another 50 are waiting for their homes to be built. The length of Aceh province, survivors are moving forward. Motorcycle taxi driver Tunku Irwan Umar lost three daughters, his home, and all his worldly possessions to the tsunami. He's since emerged from months of grief to cobble together a new taxi from salvaged parts. And in August, he and his wife were handed the keys and ownership papers to their new temporary home. The land has been secured rent-free for the next two years, at which time the homes can be dismantled, moved to deeded building sites, and rebuilt as permanent structures. Apalagi macam ke orang ayam ayam yang datang sini dari dari daru ada dari Kanada dari ada dari Australia kadang kadang ada dari orang Jepang sudah bergabung membantu kami melihat kami duduk di tenda di rumput rumput di duduk di situ membantu kasih tenda enggak ada air diantar air bersih sudah sudah antar air bersih kadang kadang kami dibikin rumah seperti ini 
Kalau rumah anti gempa ini aku rasa sudah layak untuk dipakai. Daripada kami tidur di rumput, tidur di tenda itu, moga-moga macam kayak ini sudah baguslah. Initial skepticism about the need for temporary shelters in post tsunami Aceh has disappeared. With close to 70,000 people still living in tents, implementing an effective temporary shelter program is now one of the cornerstones of a multi-agency international effort. I think, you know, IOM, you know, should be rightly proud of the work that's, you know, been put in place because I think at the start there were a lot of people who maybe questioned whether or not this was the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do. But the reality is that IOM went ahead and actually implemented and has houses up where very few other people do. The success of IOM's shelter program hinges upon close cooperation with its beneficiaries and the seamless integration of sustainable livelihood support programs. IOM's community outreach section meets regularly with the internally displaced population to explain IOM's shelter project and identify particularly vulnerable groups. Occasionally, these public forums can become heated. The 3,000 people living in this Bandarache camp are frustrated by what they see as unreasonable delays and unfulfilled promises. IOM is only one uh, agency that delivers their promises. Up to now, a uh, small NGO is uh, delivering some of their promises, but a lot of uh, large NGO and donor is not uh, pro uh, deliver their promises. IOM is both have the funds and also have the capacity to implement. That's uh, why uh, IOM is uh, perform better than the other.